Hey guys, wanted to do a quick look at the Mechabellum dev log number one. So uh, I've been playing a bunch of this game on stream recently and been enjoying it immensely. Came out of nowhere for me, but it's been excellent. So let's see what they have to say about what's happening in the continuation of their early access. So uh, started with a good 91%, uh, which is deserved. The game is excellent. Let's see what they have to say about the roadmap. Before the end of June, improve the matchmaking experience. Auto matches will be using the standard yellow rating system. Good. Enable players to vote to speed up game progress. Don't know what that means. I'm not actually super convinced that's a good idea either. Uh, I guess it depends how they implement it and how the voting system works. Can it be vetoed by any player? but kind of curious what that means. Enable spectator delay by default in auto matches and tournaments. That's a good change. I like their automated tournament system, but it is super susceptible to stream sniping. Improve the report system so we can manage the public chat better. I think this is a lost cause, managing the public chat. Um, so I don't think they want to eventually invest in a report system where people have to manually review this shit, but who knows. Make one to two balance adjustments. I, this must be tongue in cheek, right? I, I don't think there's huge imbalances in the game too much right now, um, but that must just be tongue in cheek. Implement various quality of life improvements. This is a very unspecified uh, nebulous goal, but sure, I like it. Add several new unit techs, that's good. Some of the techs, uh, some of the units have like 11 techs or something or eight techs or something ridiculous, and some of them have just five. So uh, I think shoring up the weaker units or the units with less tech options is a very good idea. Let's take a look further on out before the end of July. Launch the credit store, which includes avatars, avatar frames, and emotes. This is super important. This is gonna be the monetization of their game long-term. So I hope they do well with this because I'd like to see this game continue to be around and be interesting and fun later on. And I don't really care if they wanna sell cosmetics. That's a nice way to monetize a game. I'm actually happy to pay full price for games up front. Often as a streamer, I don't have to, but that concept to me is more appealing than microtransaction or pay to win games uh, by and large. Although I don't mind uh, cosmetic microtransactions. Add a third party, a third device besides the sentry missiles and shield generators, a missile interceptor. That could be fun. I like the rock, paper, scissors of some of the systems in the game. This might be another one of those. It's kind of nice to have more options. Add fortification upgrades to the core buildings, which can consume supplies to increase the HP of core buildings. Uh, that might be interesting for some of the early rush against some of the early rush strategies. I'm not sure in general if we want that. It's, it's an idea. I suppose it can't hurt to have an, as an option, but I do like the impact of rush strategies catching one of the buildings and therefore swinging the fight. I think it's interesting. Optimize the replay viewing experience. Good. The fact I can't skip around in a replay is really, really frustrating. I mostly use replays to analyze my own gameplay. So coming back to what happened is really important. And I can't not be able to skip ahead or skip back really sucks for that. Optimize the lobby UI layout. Don't even know what that means. Don't know what it'd be relevant for, but sure. Add more unit techs and reinforcement cards. Uh, yeah, techs are good. I think the reinforcement cards is a pretty big diversity already, or a lot of them. They do a bunch of different things. Having more could be fine. All right, moving even further out. Before the end of August, allow AIs to take over surrendered teammates in 2v2 and continue the game. It's a nice quality of life change. Add a more compact 2v2 map. I haven't played the 2v2 map at all yet, so I don't know how much of an impact that is. I did have viewers say that they preferred to watch 1v1s because they could see what was happening, whereas in 2v2, they weren't able to see that. So maybe this is what they mean by a more compact 2v2 map. This game is very spectator friendly. So uh, leaning into that is going to be really good for them in their tournament and um, ability to promote this game to a viewing audience. Add a super giant unit war factory. Sounds fun. It's going to be, I mean, Two of the other giant units already create more units and a war factory sounds like it's gonna be spawning more units, but more units are is fun. They're gonna to have to add more units across the course of this game's life anyways. That's just gonna be how they keep the game interesting. So um, be curious about that. Add unit skins to the credit score, good. Store even. Further along, add four player free for all mode. Man, how is that gonna work? That's an interesting idea. I didn't even thought about free for alls in this game. Optimize the experience of survival mode. I haven't played survival mode, but uh, some people have asked to see that. That seems to be like a wave survival single player thing. I love the multiplayer aspect of this, so it hasn't appealed to me too much, but that doesn't mean it won't appeal to other people and sure, make it better. Add two new core units, the Wraith, an air unit, and the Scorpion, a land unit. The names are temporary. 
core units. I don't know what a core unit constitutes here. Like what's a core versus extension unit or whatever the contrast to core is. Um, again, more units is good, but uh, don't know what that means. Add four to six experimental units. They are enhanced, often enlarged variants of existing units, and they will first appear as bosses in survival mode. Oh, maybe this is a survival mode feature, this core unit stuff. Cool. Answering community questions. Yes, we read most of your comments under patch notes, your posts on the Steam discussion and Discord, and we watch Twitch streams regularly to see how you players, how players with different skill levels play. Oh, they've probably seen the low levels of skill on my channel then, maybe. Can I become stronger by playing by paying to win in the future? No, good. We continue to update the game. Well, they better it's early access. We have big plans for the game still for the early access phase. We, as we can, so we will continue to update the game for sure. After the early access period, we'll keep updating the game for as long as possible. That's a weird. His last statement's weird. Surely this game, if it's going to try to engage with the other auto battler model and keep the PVP interesting and balanced, surely they're going to need to do regular balance patches indefinitely, like as long as the game lives for it to not get stale. So it's interesting they say for as long as possible. I wonder what the limitation for them is, like what their intention is. We make improvements to the matchmaking system. The current combat system is designed for a small community of players who mainly fight in the lobby. At present, it will not be able to bring a... At present, it has not been able to bring an excellent experience to players who play auto matchmaking, and many players cannot be matched with suitable opponents. We add a new matchmaking system based on the standard ELO method as soon as possible in June, which will work together with the current combat power system and will keep improving the matchmaking experience. This hasn't been a problem for me yet. I'm pretty low levels on the ladder still, so that um, hasn't been an issue, but good. In the later stage of a battle, sometimes the pace is very slow. Is there a way to speed it up? In the future, we will automatically speed up battles in some situations, such as when one side has only air forces left and the other has no anti-air units. In addition, we will also add the function of players from both sides voting to speed up the battle. Oh, so maybe this is what they mean when they said that earlier. They mean like mid-fight. If both players are like, all right, let's speed this up, they can do that. That's a good idea. Sentry missile is so powerful. Why? Sentry missile, shield devices, nukes, and various commands in the command center, they all take on an important role in the game, allowing players to quickly increase their own strength to solve problems in the current round at the expense of long-term economy. Because of their existence, the power curves of both players, uh, because of their existence, the power curves of both players will lead alternately in a game. The power curves will lead alternately. Okay, so some players are ahead. When, okay, I'm sure. Which is why comebacks happen so frequently in this game. Although the Sentinel missile is very powerful in the current round because it can only explode once, it will hurt the player's long-term economy. I think the current strength of the Sentry missile is appropriate, and the offensive defense around Sentry missiles provide more strategy in the game. I actually agree with this. It is extremely annoying being Sentry missile nuked, but the the copium strategy for that is internally you go and that's fifty bucks he'll never get back. Where I can pump, uh, pump this into a unit or a unit upgrade. So I, I kind of agree with this sentiment. I think this is a lot of the core gameplay loop is balancing your economy versus your immediate needs. So uh, I think that's good. And the nukes in the research center hurting the strategy of the game. These have already been changed to a card. Um, so I, guess, I suppose this question was asked before then. Our original intention of designing the nuke is to provide players the way to immediately forcefully break the enemy lineup in the current round at the cost of future economy. But at present, because it's often difficult for weaker players to grasp the timing to use nukes, nukes often become the advantage amplifiers for leading players in the lower ladder. I think that's true. And nukes give advant uh, aggressive strategies too much advantage. Taking these factors into consideration, in the recent patch, we decided to move the nuke out of the research center and make it a reinforcement card at the price of 350. Um, I'm not sure that solved anything, really. Um, I think they're what they're talking about is win more, right? The the stronger player in a stronger position um, can win more with a nuke anyways. And I think that is still true because the stronger player in the stronger position can often afford the 350 where the other player cannot. Um, I don't like nukes right now. Uh, they seem like a much larger version of a sentry missile. But whereas the sentry missile is limited to your side of the map and has a much smaller damage impact, um, the nuke is not. Um, nukes feel extremely swinging to me. And maybe they're designed to be that way, but they feel swinging in a bad way to me. Uh, will there be new units? At present, we have we still have three planned core units that have not been released. One is a super giant unit that costs 800 supplies. One is a medium ground unit that costs 300 supplies. And one is a medium air unit that costs 300 supplies. In addition to the three new core units, we're also making four to six units, which are experimental variants of the current units, often very large in size, with powerful attributes and text. And they will be First be used as bosses in survival mode and may be moved to PvP battles as reinforcement cards. Beyond all of this, we will try to introduce non-mech units in the future, and we have the time and capacity to design and test them fully. That's all for today. We'll try to make this dev vlog a regular thing. Thank you all for reading and supporting us. Write in the comment section, Discord, or Steam. If you have more questions, we'll try to answer them in the next dev vlog. 
um, I'm really happy with this game so far. Really impressed with it. Came out of nowhere for me. Um, it's been an extremely enjoyable experience. So um, nice to see them uh, engaging with the community and uh, their plans seem right on target for continuing to make the game great. So overall, really impressive from me, uh, for me rather. Anyways, uh, if you enjoy it, let me know in the comments. Um, if I keep playing this game, I'll keep doing these updates. Uh, they seem pretty relevant to our content. So 